Hi, this is Des from Bobbles and Bubbles and I'm coming to you today with a short tutorial on brewing kombucha. As you know, I create uh, many things in my home. This is just one of the things that I do in my kitchen. So if you already have a SCOBY culture, kombucha culture, um, this is the second part of the process, the actual brewing process. And I'll cover bottling and creating a, a SCOBY in another video. But for today, we're going to just go through the brewing process. And this is my, my uh, technique on, on how to brew. Okay, let's get started. What you'll need is black tea and sugar and your SCOBY culture and some starting liquid. Uh, from a previous batch. I usually use about 20% of uh, kombucha from my previous batch. Uh, this is hibiscus. So that's why it's pink. It's a hibiscus uh, tea and we're going to brew with black tea today. So we're doing a gallon. This is a batch for one gallon. You'll need one cup of sugar and eight tea bags. So I have filtered water. I'm just going to use just a small little bit and I'm going to bring it to almost a full boil but not quite. Okay, while our water is heating up I did want to cover a couple things. Uh, when you're brewing or bottling kombucha uh, you want to make sure your, your utensils and your, um, your hands are kind of vinegar sterilized. And I have this here, just plain white vinegar um, will do the trick. Um, that way it, it uh, stays so that the uh, fermentation process can be as clean as possible. Um, another thing I wanted to show you was my SCOBY Hotel. Um, it's always nice to have a secondary culture just in case something goes wrong with your main batch. And any utensils that you clean, you can use soap to clean them, but make sure it's antibacterial or it's not antibacterial soap. You don't want to introduce um, antibacterial soap to your uh, to your culture because it'll kill your culture. So anything that you uh, clean your dishes with, make sure it's rinsed very well. So okay, so I'm gonna need a spoon. Okay, so my water's heated up, and we'll just add the tea bags just to get the um, the tea brewed. And then I'm going to add cold water to this because you never ever want to add hot water to your kombucha culture um, because it, uh, the temperature will kill your culture. So you want to make sure it's room temperature. So I'm just going to let this sit for a minute. Sugar into the warm water or to the hot water or to the hot tea I should say. Okay so my sugar has dissolved. And now I'm just going to fill this up with room temperature water. And I know because of the size of this uh, pot, I will need to top it off just slightly in my uh, brewing container. But I know pretty much that this is just slightly under a gallon. So um, I'll post the full recipe for how much water, how much tea bags, and um, how much sugar you need for this one gallon batch. So I'm just going to add cool water to it. So when I add it to my batch, it will be room temperature because I don't want to sit around and wait for it to cool off. So this is a good way to do that. And it's room temperature, it's perfect. So I'm just going to add this to my batch and I'll top it off just slightly. Yeah. Okay, so I always have, anytime I do a, a a new brew I change the towel out for my top you never ever want to use anything with um, holes in it no cheesecloth just a basic 
kitchen towel flower sack type kitchen towel will uh, do great for your brew. So you don't ever want to cover it with a lid. It needs oxygen to ferment. And you never ever want to use cheesecloth because the bugs will get in there and you don't want flies in your kombucha. That's disgusting. So keep it covered at all times because you don't want, again, flies to be in your brew. Here's my rubber band. I just took it off. So here we go. And let it sit for maybe four days and then we'll we'll bottle it.